Hey guys, it's Neo. In this video, I want to talk about vacuum devices and uh, VED or vacuum device therapy for Peyronie's. Um, so, vacuum devices are one of the, what I consider one of the three physical therapies for Peyronie's. Uh, you can see in my other video, I go over the three physical therapies for Peyronie's, the main ones, which are attraction by device or by hand, and then the vacuum device, and then heat. But uh, the vacuum devices are really interesting and um, I would say the most uh, complex compared to traction just because it's, uh, it's pretty easy to injure yourself and it almost feels less natural uh, than traction because it's um, the way the, the vacuum pump fills out your penis is, is not a natural thing. It doesn't mean it's not good for it. Uh, there's a lot of benefits and I, I think it's actually miraculous. I think it's quite a, a miracle tool. But um, if you don't know what this is, it's just a vacuum device that looks like a penis pump, but it's like a medical grade one that fills your penis with blood. It creates a um, kind of vacuum or uh, uh, a kind of pressure. Um, what is that called? Negative pressure within the tube to fill out your penis. So you can go from a flaccid state to a full state. Um, but okay, so what are these tools or these uh these these medical grade penis pumps these vacuum devices used for originally they're used just to help get your penis hard so you can put a penis ring on and and then penetrate and uh, have, have sex so that was kind of the original purpose of penis pumps uh, it was to get your penis hard and then you could remove it and put the, the ring on and then you're good to go but um along with Peyronie's disease and erectile dysfunction uh, people kind of figured out that you could use these devices as a th uh, a therapy. So it's vacuum device therapy, which is different than just using it with a, p a penis ring. Um, so this therapy, uh, what exactly is it? Well, what it is, is you you have your, your flaccid penis or maybe partially filled out and you put the penis pump on and you pump your flaccid penis uh, to a certain... Um, size or percentage of being filled out with blood and then let it go back down fill it up again let it go back down fill it up again let it go back down and it's kind of this um it, it's kind of like a physical therapy that you do every day or every other day you might want to give it time to rest um and you know it's hard to know what is right because there are no studies there, there are no studies so far on physic um vacuum device physical therapy and like you know what uh, you know, how long to hold and, and all these things. People have developed their own ideas, but there is no like correct protocol. So kind of like with traction or traction by hand, you kind of are in no man's land. Uh, there are people who can guide you and kind of tell you how they they um, got through their Peyronie's symptoms with the vacuum devices, but you are kind of in no man's land. But these things are really, really effective. And uh, they're especially good for hourglass deformity and indentations or uh, any kind of denting in your penis. So not so much uh, just a, a bend, though it helps with that too, but more the indentations. Um, you know, I the first time I used one, uh, I used the cheapest one available. Uh, and I remember I used it, just, just pumped up my penis a couple times, and immediately the, I noticed the effect. And I, I felt my penis felt a lot better. It felt like uh, it was hanging more naturally afterwards. It felt um, it felt like it was no longer segmented. It was like one thing. Like I, it's very hard to describe this, but I think guys with Peyronie's can kind of agree that when you have it, it's like the scar splits your penis into like two segments or three even or whatever. It feels like you have different like chambers or segments to your penis. It doesn't feel like one thing anymore. Well, after I used the vacuum device, even for even just like. A couple minutes or less just like pump it up let it go down pump it up let it go down and then afterwards i'm like oh my god my, my penis is is a single thing again <laughs> it's structurally sound and that made me really happy i remember just freaking out about it like every morning i would just pump up a little bit let it go back down maybe 15 minutes or less and then i would go off to work or school or whatever and uh i felt so much better when i when i would when i would go out and live my life because my penis would be hanging better, uh, the damaged areas would be more filled out with blood, and there's just more um, oxygen-rich blood in the penis. And you can, uh, you know, like traction, it 
it helps move the blood around. I mean, I think the vacuum device does a better job in traction at moving blood around, right? And especially at moving blood through the, the areas that might have a hematoma or, or damaged parts of your penis. And uh, really get things circulating again and out of a state of hypoxia, which um, leads to fibrosis. So, uh, you know, I, I think these, these are really a, a powerful, powerful, uh, it's a powerful tool. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how, how to use it exactly, but I can tell you kind of what I did. Um, first off, it's hard to, you need to get a good seal on it. So uh, typically you use like kind of lubrication or something to get a seal. You could use, uh, you could probably use oil or anything. You got to, you know, mess with this. Um, and actually trim or completely shave your pubic area so you can get a good seal on it with the, with the, um, the insert that goes in the, the tube of the uh, penis pump. I actually don't have one now, otherwise I'd show it to you. But uh, yeah, get a good seal. And uh, for me, it was kind of hard to get a good seal. And um, depending on your anatomy, you can injure yourself kind of, how can I say this? Um, depending on your anatomy, it, it's hard to get a good seal. So for me, my um, the area that goes into like where the, uh, like, um, but what is that called? Like where your balls are basically. Um, it's kind of, uh, it gets sucked up into the vacuum. So a lot of guys get their like balls or scrotal cords like sucked into the vacuum. And that can be painful and that can lead to uh, an injury. So if you're finding that like that keeps happening, you might just have the way your anatomy is, is that uh, the vacuum pump might just not work that well for you. But if that's the case, um, you can use a smaller insert, the smallest insert possible. So the seal is more on your penis and not so much like on your um, pelvic area. And you might be able to get around that. And I'm not saying you just shouldn't use the pump if you're noticing that your your uh, those scrotal cords, if you will, are getting sucked in, into there a little bit. You can still do it, but be very careful with the pressure if that's the case. I did injure myself, and that's why I don't use the, the vacuum pump anymore. And, you know, a lot of guys don't injure themselves, and they're just fine. Uh... Some guys injure themselves a little bit. Sometimes it's subtle. Some guys get a little bit of swelling, which I'll talk about in a moment, limp swelling. And, uh, but in general, I don't want to give the impression that vacuum devices like cause injuries or anything. I think they definitely can, but you want to be, um, as long as you're careful, I think it's a, a miraculous tool. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that when you first start using these things, you will not be able to get to a 100% erection with them. Maybe you will, but I really doubt it. Um, I remember when I put it on, I got the seal, I started pumping, nothing happened. I'm like, my penis is not filling out at all. And then after I kind of practiced with it, it would start to fill out a little bit, but then there was like a limit. It was like only like a, not even a 50% erection. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And then I would, you know, take it off or release the pressure and, uh, and, and do it again, which is what the whole therapy is, is filling it out, letting it go back down, releasing the pressure, filling it out and repeating that process. And um, you don't want to hold you don't want to hold it for very long, okay? So when you fill out your penis, don't hold it for more than a couple minutes, okay? Um, I injured myself by holding it for maybe ten minutes, um, which is interesting because there have been studies and statements by Peroni specialists saying that you should hold for like an hour, but I injured myself holding it ten minutes. I, I recommend you don't even hold, don't. I don't think there's any point in holding the erect state inside the tube. Uh, I, I really don't. I, I know some, some guys might disagree, and I would love to hear your opinion, especially if you're a neurologist, especially if you've really worked with, with guys with the vacuum devices. I would love to hear your opinion, and I, I, I will tell you right now, I, I, I know that I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to a lot of this stuff, and I, I would love to know. I, but um, what I found is the safest way for me was to to pump up the penis like to 50%, don't if it, if it doesn't keep filling out don't keep pumping like crazy okay that's a really bad idea um if it if your penis isn't filling out past 50 then that's fine just don't don't even try um and then just just you know keep letting it go back to zero and then pumping it up again or letting it kind of you know go to 50% and like let it go back down and back up to 50 back up and down like that and you might find that you can get all the way to a full erection or bigger than a full erection though i i I don't know. I, I'm afraid of hurting myself. You know, again, a lot of guys might be able to go 
you know, to 100% erection and even like beyond uh, and actually get a good benefit from that. But I, I do not recommend this because you are in no man's land. You might injure yourself and then nobody can help you. And for me, um, I ended up injuring myself holding for about 10 minutes. Well, I, I think I was watching a movie and I just kind of forgot. It wasn't that long. I didn't hold for that long. And I was at 100% erection. And um, what happened was I got the dreaded, uh, it's called the donut effect uh, in the penis enlargement community. And, you know, I, I hate bringing up terms in the penis enlargement community because I don't want to associate myself with that kind of um, bro science, if you will. But the donut effect, um, it's terrifying, it's disgusting, and basically what it is is you rupture a, a lymphatic vessel in your penis, and it, the whole, your whole penis just puffs up, like uh, triple the size. It's huge. You're like, what the fuck happened? It's all mushy, and there's like a lymph fluid in there. And it was the most horrifying thing I had ever seen. Just re remembering it is actually terrifying for me. Um, it was, uh, you know, I thought I, I thought I was finished. Like, you know, my sex life is done. Uh, this is worse than Peyronie's, is what I thought. So my penis was completely filled with fluid. It was, uh, you know, it, it's hard to talk about this, to be honest. Um, it's really hard to talk about this, but uh, I feel like it has to be said, okay? Um, one of the best therapies for Peyronie's is the vacuum device therapy. And a side effect of vacuum device therapy or something that can go wrong is, is this issue. So I'm going to talk about it. And uh, it is called the donut effect. Um, I'm sure there's a more scientific name for it, but there is very little literature on this. And this is quite interesting, right? Um, why are there no studies on this? Uh, why is there no information on this? Uh, you know, that that's interesting. You know, maybe this is where, this is the point where you do look into kind of some of the bro science, though I, I so-called bro science, you know? Um, so uh, it's not that clear cut like this is science and this isn't and this is good information and this isn't. Uh, I'm not I'm not saying that uh, you should be on the penis enlargement forums, but I'm not going to say you shouldn't either. But uh, let me just say that I, uh, I I had this lymph swelling in my penis for at least two years from that incident, and let me tell you, it it was a nightmare. Um, I felt I really felt. Uh, like I had kind of lost the battle against the disease and um, I felt stupid. You know, I, there I was uh, in this apartment, no money, um, living just a shit life. Um, and I was, I didn't even have a bed at the time. I was on this mat on the, on the cold floor with my laptop next to me and using this pump. And uh, I was so excited to use it, you know, and it was working. It was working really well. And then I just was a little bit too stupid with it. And um, you can find guidelines for a protocol protocol online uh, on, on Peyronie's forums or wherever. Um, forums on the disease or elsewhere. But I followed those. Um, at least I, I think I, I followed the guidelines that I had read about very clearly. Yet still I injured myself. And um, I'm not blaming anyone for that, because I know that this is um, murky waters. This is no man's land. This is stuff that's uncharted, and um, you know it, it's it's complicated. And uh, everybody's different. Everybody's anatomy is different. But I was really, uh, really frustrated by this because there was nowhere to go for help. You know, donut effect. What's that? Nobody knows. Um, you know, some urologists just wanted to get. I asked a urologist about it. And he just wanted me to get out. And uh, it, it was really, uh, it was a dark, dark time for me. And, um, you know, all the supplements we take and the drugs and the devices we buy and stuff to try to get better. And then when things go wrong or get worse, it can really be painful. Because then, you know, what are you doing? You know, who, who's the loser? Who's the idiot then? That, it really, really feel, you feel like an idiot. You know, talking to women with when, you know, I remember talking to women, my penis is all like filled up with fluid and feeling like shit, talking to my classmates, coworkers, people. And I just felt like an absolute idiot. Um, I mean, who can you go to, right? But, you know, we, we're, we're doing the best we can and we, we shouldn't be critical of ourselves for this. You know, this vacuum therapy has proven to work for a lot of people and it's, um, 
not as studied as traction, but there are, there is uh, information and in, in research or papers on it. And uh, it did help me. It helped me so much. So I don't want to scare you guys away and say don't use the vacuum uh, device. I, I really think you should. I really think you should try it. I really think it has the power to kind of restore your erect, your erectile function, your penile health, and um, fill out some of these dents. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, by the way, I am healed from this uh, lymph problem, and I'll go back into this in a moment. Uh, but uh, basically, yeah, I, I actually did get rid of some of my dents very quickly with the with the vacuum device. And I remember looking in the mirror and seeing these dents gone. And I remember um, at the time I was doing traction as well. And I still do traction, uh, which is my number one treatment. But I remember looking and seeing the dents were gone. And like, I remember, I think I just cried. I was so happy. So um, the vacuum devices are seriously effective. But you can also injure yourself. And the lymphatic injuries are very common where, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to get the donut effect that I got. Uh, you can get like a just a lymph inflammation. So you'll see like under the glands are these uh, these cord like structures. They're kind of bluish if you look at them under a light, and those will be really pronounced and stick out if you're using the vacuum device. In a lot of cases, if you're pumping too much, and uh, you know, I I stopped using the vacuum device years ago. Years, uh, you know, feels like it must be four years ago. But I had this like residual inflamed lymphatic vessel thing and like liquid under my skin in my penis for at least two years after this injury, maybe three years. And um, it, it was like it would kind of go away and then I would have sex and then it would be back as if somehow by, you know, irritating the lymph vessels again, it would like leak or come back or something. And you know, it was really a, it was just a goddamn nightmare. It was a goddamn nightmare. But now I don't have that issue. Um, and it, it just kind of went away with a lot of rest. So not having sex that much, taking a lot of care, um, not being rough. And, um, and I, I can't do the, I can't use the vacuum device anymore. And I don't think I, I don't think I will, but I, I may, I want to, I, I actually want to try it now that I'm like better. But uh, yeah, if you have any lymph inflammation or any kind of pain with with the vacuum device, don't don't use it. And that that's a big thing. Never push through pain. Um, I never had any pain with the vacuum device, but I had this kind of tingling before the injury. So it was like this tightness around where the scarring was. Almost is what I thought. It was like this tight kind of sensation. It didn't. It wasn't pain. So I thought, well, this must still be safe. And I pumped past this kind of tingling, thinking, well, maybe the scar tissue is breaking up. And little did I know that I think I was just destroying the lymphatic vessels in my penis. And, you know, um, I wish I would have known about this. So be very careful if there's any tingling or tightness. Uh, just do not, do not push past it. With vacuum devices, less is more. Less is more, okay? It's about, it's about uh, you know, progress over years. So I had a benefit after just one session when I bought it, and I was so excited. And I think a lot of guys get really excited that they're seeing improvements. They're like, I want to use this three times a day. I would say use it once a day or even less, and use it and only pump up your penis a little bit. Okay, you don't have to go to 100%. I don't recommend it. Consider it a gentle physical therapy that is going to help you over years. Um, as long as your Pironis is improving over time, then you're fine. Okay, don't try to rush to the end and be like, I want my original penis back. I'll do everything, anything for it and try to do that. That's how you're going to injure yourself. And honestly, just uh, your, pen your peronies might get worse. So uh, just ask yourself at any, given, at any given time, is my peronies kind of improving or kind of getting worse? And how can I just keep it improving over time? So... Um, what can I really tell you about, you know, uh, how to use these things? I think I kind of summed it up. Um, you're pumping your penis up a little bit, letting it go back down, and you're, you're just repeating this. Don't, uh, don't push through pain. Don't, you know, pump too much. Don't hold too long. And be careful about letting your um, scrotal cords uh, get stuck in there or even putting any pressure on the area down by in your, 
uh, not your pelvic area, but um, like where you would get a hernia. I think it's called the inguinal area. I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's something I've typed a lot but never said, right? Uh, inguinal or inguinal area. You don't want any pressure there. Uh, that's really dangerous. You could give yourself a hernia, uh, which I wondered if I did. Maybe that's what I did. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what really leads to the donut effect, and nobody even knows. Uh, so um, just uh, don't be afraid of it, okay? It can help you a lot. It might even, you know, cure your symptoms. There are a lot of guys on the forums, online, or anywhere who will tell you uh, that uh, they basically cured their Peyronie's with the vacuum device. <clears throat> so don't take it lightly, you know, but um, but don't go crazy with it. You got to be so careful, okay? Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I think I think I'll end this video here. There are a lot of uh, specifics you might want to know about the model types, types of vacuum devices, where to get the cheapest ones, and like how to get a good seal. Um, you know, if you're doing it right, uh, all these things. Uh, but um, definitely just ask me. Send me a, a private message here on YouTube or, or something like that, or or a comment. And uh, let me see. I guess that's really it. And um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching again.